Well, remember, he said he did this 100% natural and he bulked after all. And so he should have put on so much muscle. He bulked as all of you think you should do. And then suddenly made a huge difference from tracking calories and training appropriately. And so could he have done this natural? Coach Greg, in today's video, another Natty Knot, and this time on an actual short king. He's only five foot four. His name is Lee Lem. And so he claims to be a hundred percent natural bodybuilder, and he goes so far as to say this. This is what a 10-year natural body transformation can look like. I'm a lifetime natural bodybuilder, and this physique is truly achievable naturally without steroids, SARMs, turkesterone, or any other form of performance-enhancing drugs. He's not just saying I don't take steroids. He's very specific to saying and naming everything. And so that is one point in his favor. Oftentimes people say, no, I'm natural. I don't take steroids. Well, are you taking SARMs, MK677? And FYI, turkesterone, ectosteroids, NMN, all these things, for example, things sold at Coach Greg's supplement store, all are 100% natural. If you're taking ectibuilder and GO2 Max and G-Test and so on, it doesn't revoke your natty card. Interested in those? Code Greg, 10% off. He wants to point out, however, that getting a physique like this, it's not something that just happens overnight. And it's not something that many people can achieve. And so remember, if you don't have a physique like this and you haven't been training for 10 plus years, consider that he has elite level genetics. And I know what you're saying. He doesn't have great genetics. He's only five foot four. Shut up. Stop it already. Stop height shaming people. Just because he's five foot four doesn't mean he doesn't have amazing genetics. This guy's very close to getting a natural pro card and he does does in fact have an amazing physique. And not only that, I've watched his videos, he's very funny, entertaining, and he explains exactly what it feels like to diet down for a bodybuilding competition. He also says that no matter how hardcore your training is, you need to have proper nutrition. But in saying that, you don't have to eat the same boring foods like chicken and broccoli just to get there. And perhaps he forgot the rice, but you don't have to eat chicken, broccoli, and rice. And so this guy sounds exactly like the kind of guy that would be eating from Coach Greg's cookbook. I don't think he has it, but if he did have it, I'm certain it would help him to diet harder than last time. This is the 10 year natural training transformation story of a cute, small, 5'4 Asian boy who couldn't grow taller, so he grew wider. I'm Lee. Well, this is 14 year old Lee. And so you can see at 14 years of age, when he first started training, the guy had abs. He already had abs, he had a little bit of muscle and he's been training for over 10 years. It normally takes just over 10 years to get close to your natural genetic potential. But because he started at such a young age, only 14, I do believe he has several years left before he reaches his natural genetic limit. Despite how I am on camera, I've always been super introverted and self-conscious. Even now, I can't even film in public because of how much social anxiety I get, and I'm still very self-conscious about the smallest things. And so despite all the muscle that he currently has, he still struggles with social anxiety, he's not happy, he's shy, and doesn't like it when he gets pimples on his face. And so how many of you can relate to that? Almost everyone. Nobody feels perfect. Everyone suffers something at some time or another. And so remember, it's okay not to be perfect, and it's also okay to try and get better. And so mainly the reason why I started training was pretty much the pursuit of self-confidence. If I had more self-confidence, I could make more friends, then I could get more attention in general, and then I guess the beautiful light at the end of the tunnel, pussy. And so he started training the gym. He wanted to build up more confidence. Guy's five foot four, a short king. Perhaps people made fun of him. And so he wanted to build up a more impressive physique, perhaps to get better abs, more size, so he could become a more confident guy and to get some cookbook. And so full disclosure, this guy never got any until the age of 23. Like that Weird Al song, Like a Surgeon, only the one that was sung by Madonna. We're trying not to get demonetized saying the wrong words, but remember, if you're having trouble with the downstairs, you can always get harder than last time. So I started around like 53 kilos. That was my starting weight when I first started training. And so starting weight around 14, 15, 53 kilograms, that's just slightly under 120 pounds. It might sound really light, but remember, he's under five foot four and he's only 14, maybe 15 years of age. Being exposed to, I guess, YouTube back then in around like 2012, there wasn't a lot of knowledge in terms of training. And so he was back in 2012 
2012, he wasn't watching Coach Greg videos, and so he didn't know exactly how to train. He had to mask the knowledge on his own, and so he was doing a bro slip. He wasn't training properly. We all know it's better to train each body part twice a week, but back in 2012, people didn't know all that much. Initially, my first three years of training was purely a bro split, so I was only training everything like once a week, and I kind of just ate as much as I could. I was eating to grow. Obviously, I put on a lot of body fat. And so he decided to go on a bulk. Of course he did. Who doesn't decide to go on a bulk at one time in their life? And so he gained about 26 kilograms, close to 60 pounds, but the majority of it was fat. There's no reason to bulk this extensively. And they've actually done studies. They've compared people who go on small bulks versus major bulks. No difference in muscle growth. Just more fat gain than last time. I'm not against bulking. The guy was only 53 kilograms, but you don't need to go up to 79 kilograms in a short period of time and think it's all going to be muscle. Small surplus. If you're underweight, small surplus, all that you actually need. And I honestly would have kept going if my doctor didn't tell me to stop because of high blood pressure. And so think of it. The doctor told him to stop. High blood pressure. The guy is a teenager. Why are you force feeding all the time trying to gain muscle when you gain too much weight it increases your blood pressure and it's not healthy. And so please don't over bulk. If you're going to bulk, at least cut it off once you get to 20% body fat. Anything above 20% is not helping you. Unless you're perhaps a power lifter, straw man, competitor, there's no reason to over bulk. Quick interruption, like the video if you liked it. And if you like my content, subscribe faster than last time so that you can be the first one to get notified. It really helps the algorithm. Back to the video. And and then during my second year, I was around 16, 17 at that time, and I decided to do my first cut. And so around 16, 17 years of age, decides to go on a cut, he bulked all this time, wasn't happy with his physique, remember I had high blood pressure, didn't feel he looked good, decided to go on a cut, followed those old school bodybuilder plans. Chicken, broccoli, and rice, protein powder, oatmeal, you know what it's like. He clearly had not discovered Coach Greg, he did not have cookbook version 3.0, he didn't know you could eat anabolic French toast, lasagnas, you name it, you could have it. He didn't know about making the recipes lower in calories than last time, that you could feel full. And I'm foreshadowing because he's going to develop an eating problem. It starts with a D, an eating D, but we can't talk about it because we don't want to get demonetized. On top of a very poor diet, very low intensity training, I lost quite a lot of muscle. <laughs> and so he went on a starvation diet, trained inappropriately because he wasn't watching Coach Greg videos. And what do you think happened? Yeah, he lost a lot of weight. Of course he did. But remember, he also lost a lot of muscle. So that's what happened to this guy. He starved away his muscle that he'd put on for the last two or three years and also wasn't training effectively. He was not watching Coach Greg videos. It's not his fault. How can you blame someone if they haven't watched any of my 2,900 videos? I mean, can you really understand fitness if you're not watching Coach Greg? So this period is pretty much where everything really started kicking off because I started documenting my progress and I learned the importance of tracking calories. He then discovered counting calories, not macros, tracking calories. Calories in, calories out. How many times have I said this? Probably 2,000 or more to this point. And so he started tracking calories appropriately and training each body part twice a week and he was astounded by the progress he made in those six months. But remember, he said he did this 100% natural and he bulked after all. And so he should have put on so much muscle. He bulked as all of you think you should do and then suddenly made a huge difference from tracking calories and training appropriately. And so could he have done this natural? I competed in my first bodybuilding competition in 2017. And so at the age of 19, he enters his first competition by training effectively and having a healthy diet, finally. And he competes at a whooping 65 kilograms. That's 143 pounds. And so remember, is it possible that a guy could be shredded on stage at 143 pounds with only five years of training? Yes, it actually is. Although it's possible that he wasn't natural, it's possible we don't know for sure. I hasn't passed a lie detector or urine test. We don't see his blood work. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say that a guy who enters a natural bodybuilding show at the age of 19 can compete at 143 pounds if he trained harder than last time and he has amazing genetics, of which this guy has in spades. He then went on to nationals, got second place, weighing, guess what, 64 kilograms. That means he got lighter, not bigger. 
And so when you're a natural athlete and you start dieting, you're not going to put on muscle at the same time as you're dieting to get lean into the show. Very difficult to put on muscle when you go from eight to seven to six to five percent body fat. And so it makes sense to me that this guy would be getting lighter as he gets leaner for his competition. Have we seen it go to the opposite? I kept dieting and I was suddenly 67 kilograms. That would make me highly suspicious. How is he putting on all this muscle while in a calorie deficit? But then after the comp, I fell into a binge eating disorder. Following this competition, he developed a disorder known as binge eating, and that's the disorder. And so what often happens, and in fact, it's 25% of people involved in sports that have weight classes, is they develop disordered eating. Think of it, the guy had been bulking for two or three years, eating more food than ever before. Then suddenly he goes on a diet. It's his first time. He's restricting calories, doing cardio, gets to the competition shredded, then following the competition, eats everything and anything he wants. And so what do you think is going to happen? Of course, you're going to gain weight. Of course, you're going to be hungry. Not only that, the restrictive diet would have decreased his natural testosterone production. And if this does occur, remember code Greg 10% off, we do in fact have G test and three test. And although this can be effective, it's more important to change your diet and do not overly restrict calories. Anyone dieting into that sub 10% body fat range, you are in fact in danger. I kind of felt like I deserve to kind of pig out and let go for a little bit. And so he says, you know, I deserve to pig out a little bit. I deserved it. I needed it. If you diet to such an extent that you need to binge after the diet, you took the diet too far. I'd much rather see somebody compete in a bodybuilding show and not win, not be as shred as they should have been, but not develop a disorder after so that they can be healthy. It's all about your health. If your diet is not realistic, you can't maintain the diet for the long term, then please don't do the diet at all. What's the point of dieting for three months getting shredded if you're going to gain all the weight back and then some in the three months following the diet? He then got into powerlifting, but after a while did not like it, decided to take a bodybuilding yes again. He then dieted harder than last time, ended up at 62.5 kilograms. Remember, he's age 23 at this point. And so if he was actually on performance enhancing drugs, would you not expect him to gain a lot more muscle than this? Even on HRT, even on SARMs, I would expect him to put on much more muscle than this. And with each passing competition, he diets a little bit better and gets even leaner. And you can see the conditioning and the shape of this guy. He has amazing genetics. And so although he's 23 and looks like this, you might be thinking, how could you be that lean? How could you have this kind of physique? Well, clearly he has the genetics, trained hard and smart, and this is the result. But I guarantee you, if you saw him in the gym in person, you would think, this guy is not that big. 142 pounds, that is not a large man. But we made the mistake of giving myself a week off of my diet, which then caused me to spiral into the worst binge eating disorder. And following the competition, he didn't learn from the first competition, he gave him a week off the diet. Oh, the show's over, eat what you want for a week and then we'll eat healthy again. Huge mistake, when I coach people, I tell them the real diet, it starts after the competition, the week after the competition, that is even harder than the week before. Why? Because the diet's over. You don't have a reason to keep eating healthy. You're not about to get on stage in a bikini or a Speedo. And so what is the point? You eat all the junk food in the world for the following week. You put on 20, maybe even 30 pounds. Very difficult to get back onto a healthy diet after that. And so for that reason, I always encourage people to, while they're on a diet, to make that diet more realistic than last time. You're allowed to have cheats every single day. Make it part of your plan. The key, however, is to have those cheats to be healthy. Foods that you can make lower in calories so that it's not actually a cheat. It's part of your diet. My goal now is to compete sometime in September. I'm going to make up for the last competition I dropped out of. We're planning to come in even leaner than last time. And so perhaps he now watches Coach Greg. Clearly, getting leaner than last time sounds like a quote I would say. And I'm watching him on Instagram and the guy is absolutely peeled. He says he's at 6% body fat, getting down closer to 5. Strided glutes, everything while being 100% natural. But remember, the guy weighs in the low 60 kilos. He's under 150 pounds and so he's not massive. He's been training for over 10 years and in fact, he now has a coach. And by the end of this, I'm hoping I don't fall into another eating disorder because a third time's a charm. And he says, this time I'm not going to exhibit disordered eating behavior. He's learned his lessons. He knows now what to do. And whether you're natural or enhanced, when you are shredded, 
you are going to suffer. And I want to highlight this by showing exactly how he feels living at sub 6% body fat, preparing for his next competition in under a month. Looks out for my bodybuilding competition and we're currently estimating to be around 6% body fat right now. And even though I look good, I feel far from it. You have no energy to do anything whatsoever. And so he has no energy. It feels like he's trained legs every single day. He doesn't have the oomph, the voix de vie to get around in the house. Even hurts to sit down. Look how lean he is, five weeks out. Out. Also, he's hungry all the time, no matter what he eats. Going to the bathroom all the time. Can't get a good night's sleep, hard to sleep, getting up to pee three times every night. My conclusion, this guy, 100% natural. He's at the top level, elite level genetics. And although he's only five foot four, weighing in the 140s, he has an amazing physique. The shoulders are wider than last time. He has a small waist. The guy is peeled. To be at 6% body fat, five weeks from a show with stride glutes, many people get up on stage not even as lean as this. And so I fully expect come show day, the guy be perhaps 5% body fat, maybe even leaner. As a natural athlete, that is incredible. And so I'd encourage you to go and follow him on Instagram and YouTube if you're trying to see what it's like to be a natural athlete who has amazing genetics. Remember, most people, even with 10 years of hard training, they're not going to look like this. This is a guy who's close to getting a natural pro card. Please go and give him a follow. Very funny, highly encourage him. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. If you like the video, like the video. Please go give it a follow. Watch those two bloops. And of course, the cookbook, the training book, the circle diet book, coaching plans by me and my team. And also the harder than last time clothing line, tank tops, hoodies, jog pack, t-shirts, all kinds of stuff. Get over to the website, code Greg 10% off. And until next time, I am out.